Start by decontaminating your hands. The WHO seven stage hand washing technique must be used every time you decontaminate your hands. Don your apron and gloves. Clean the trolley using ChlorClean. You must ensure that you clean the whole trolley, but for the purposes of this video, we will just clean the top. Allow the trolley to air dry for a minimum of three minutes. During this time, you can clean your tray. Clean the inside first and then the outside, using a different wipe for each. Remove your gloves and apron. Decontaminate your hands and wait for the tray to dry for three minutes. During this time, you can gather the equipment onto the trolley. Make sure that there is a sharp spin to hand. Do not put the unopened equipment in the tray at this point. You must now decontaminate your hands. Check that all of your equipment is in date. Open the chlorhexidine wipe. The saline must be checked by two members of staff. Clean the neck of the saline bottle and allow this to dry. Open the 10ml syringe and connect it with the drawing up needle. Make sure that you retain the packaging of the syringe. Draw up the flush using the needle and syringe. Keep the saline bottle for reference in case the patient develops a reaction to the flush. Once you have completed drawing up your flush, place the needle immediately into the sharps bin. Remove any air from the syringe and place it back into its packaging. This protects the key component. You now need to flush the bionectal line until you see the saline appear at the distal end. To do this, pick up the bionectal packet and partially open the hub end. Holding the bionectar just below the grey hub, insert the tip of the syringe and turn it in a clockwise direction. You must ensure the rest of the bionectar remains within the packaging and the key part of the syringe and the bionectar are not touched. Place the syringe back into the original packaging and gather the rest of your equipment. Place your apron and gloves onto the clean trolley. You should now decontaminate your hands and proceed directly to your patient. Once you're at the patient's side, make sure your equipment and shark spin are within easy reach and decontaminate your hands. You should reconfirm the patient's identity against an official hospital document and confirm that the patient is happy for you to proceed. Position the patient so that they are comfortable and apply a disposable tourniquet to help locate a vein. It is good practice to initially attempt to cannulate the back of the patient's hand and work up towards the antecubital fossa if there is no suitable vein. Once you have located the vein, release the tourniquet until just before you perform the procedure.
Don your apron and gloves. Take the cannula pack from your equipment tray and open it. You must keep the wrapper of the cannula pack as it has the cannula care pathway stickers. Open out the contents of the pack. Remove the chloroprep applicator from its packaging and squeeze until the inner tube breaks. This releases the chloroprep solution. Clean the proposed puncture site in a hash formation and allow to air dry for 30 seconds. Dispose of the chloroprep into your sharps bin. Reapply your tourniquet to help distend the vein. Do not repalpate the cleaned area of skin. Take the cannula and fold the wings flat. Remove the sheath from the needle and place in the sharps bin. Your fingers must not touch the needle. Apply traction below and to the side of the proposed puncture site to help immobilise the vein. Advance the needle, bevel up, into the vein at an angle of approximately 30 degrees. Care should be taken not to insert the needle so far that it continues through the vein and out the other side. You should observe a small amount of blood, the primary flashback, in the flashback chamber, as can be seen here. Advance the device a small amount to ensure the cannula is within the lumen of the vein. Securely hold the end of the needle and push the cannula forward off the needle into the vein. You should notice blood moving up the cannula. This is known as secondary flashback and indicates that you can now release the tourniquet. Hold the needle still and advance the cannula fully into the vein. Remove the prime bionectar from its packaging. Press the vein distal to the cannula entry site to reduce the blood flow from the cannula. Remove the needle and dispose immediately into the sharps bin. Unscrew the white cap protecting the key part and while supporting the cannula, screw the bionectar onto the end. The cannula should then be secured with a sterile dressing. Start by removing the strips and place them on the wings of the cannula. Peel off the main dressing and wrap around the cannula as shown here. Remove the backing, saving it as you will require the date sticker. Before you flush the cannula, you will need to decontaminate the bionectar with a chlorhexidine wipe. Flush the cannula by securely holding the bionectar away from its key part and connect the syringe prepared earlier. Flush with 5 ml of normal saline, watching for tissueing at the cannula site. If tissueing occurs, the cannula is not within the vein and you should restart the procedure. Remove the syringe and dispose into the sharps bin. Clamp the bionectar and dispose of the tourniquet. Ensure that you document the date of insertion using the sticker provided on the dressing and place next to the cannula site. Tell the patient that the cannula will be checked and flushed three times a day and will be removed after a maximum of 72 hours. If they experience any pain or signs of infection around the cannula site, or if they have any other concerns, then they should alert a member of staff. Thank the patient and ensure that they are comfortable. You should now decontaminate your hands before proceeding to the treatment room. Dispose of your equipment, making sure that the trolley and tray are clean for the next user. Inform the staff members who are looking after the patient that you have inserted a cannula and any particular plan of care that is required. 
complete your cannula care pathway sticker and place it in the patient's medical notes, documenting any issues that may have arisen during the procedure. Commence the cannula care pathway and place it in the patient's nursing notes, which must form part of the patient's daily observations. This completes the cannulation video. We hope you now feel more confident and wish you the best of luck.